Hi class, here's our lesson on 10.1. It's called exponential functions. And maybe you've heard the phrase before, it's getting so big it's growing exponentially. When we say that, it means that it's growing at a very rapid pace. So when we look at these graphs, here's an example of y equals 2 raised to the x. And here's a picture of what this graph looks like. So these exponential functions, they are curves. They aren't straight lines, they're curves. And as you can see, it grows very quickly right in here. And the reason for that is, is if we just plot some values, what happens when x is 1? Well, 2 raised to the first is 2. So that's why we get that point right there. What happens if x is 2? Well, 2 squared is 4. So we go up to 4. Now it starts growing very rapidly. What happens when 2 is 3? 2 cubed is 8. And 8 is about right here. And then it's going to be 16 when we put in 4. And then if we put in 5, it's going to be 2 raised to the 5th is 32, and so on and so forth. And it really starts to grow very, very rapidly. So we get these exponential functions. The same is true here when we go negative. As, we, as our x value decreases, the value of our y approaches 0. If we put in a negative 1, 2 raised to the negative 1 is the same thing as saying 1 over 2 raised to the positive 1, or 1 half. So if we put in a negative 1, we go up 1 half, and that's how we get that point. If we go 2 raised to the negative second, that's the same thing as 1 over 2 to the positive second, which is a fourth. So if we go negative 2, we go up a fourth. And then if we put in 2 raised to the negative third, that's the same thing as 1 over 2 to the positive third, which is the same thing as 1 eighth. So it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. However, it never goes negative. This number will always result in a positive number. It, get, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. We call that an asymptote that approaches 0. So here is our horizontal asymptote. So knowing that, these exponential functions are going to have a horizontal asymptote. They do not have a vertical asymptote. So as far as the domain is concerned, this goes infinitely to the left, and this goes infinitely to the right. It goes higher faster than it goes to the right, but it will forever go to the right. So the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And for our range, it stays above 0. So it starts at 0 just above it. It doesn't include it. That's why we put a parenthesis there. And it goes to positive infinity. We're going to be doing more about graphs of exponential functions in a different lesson. But here's just a little intro. Now for a couple terminology things. Here's what you really need to know. These two words are important. This 2 right here, this is called the base of our function. So there's the base, and then the x is called the exponent. And that's maybe a little bit more basic. When you raise something to a power, we call that an exponent. So 2 is the base, and x is the exponent. What really defines exponential functions is when there is a variable as an exponent. You guys have never dealt with that before as far as graphs are concerned. Just like rational functions have a variable in the denominator, exponential functions has a, have a variable in the exponent. So that's very significant. OK, knowing that, we're going to talk about exponential growth and exponential decay. When graphs go up and to the right, we call those exponential growth graphs. So they get the y values get bigger as the x values get bigger. We always have that when our base is bigger than 1, such as this one. Our base is 2. 2 is bigger than 1. This is an exponential growth problem. It grew as it went to the right. So whenever you have a base that's bigger than 1, you know, 3, 4, 8, 12, any of those bases, 1.1, 1.2, all of those will result in exponential growth. Exponential decay is when our base is in between 0 and 1. We never have our bases be negative in this class, so only worry about positive bases. But if it's like a base of 1 half raised to the x power, well, that would be exponential decay or 1 fourth raised to the x power. That happens when our graphs go down as it goes to the right. So as the x's get bigger, our y's get smaller and smaller and smaller. So just practicing those, 
Here we have a base, one-fifth. That's less than one. This is going to be exponential decay. How about letter B and letter C? Four is bigger than one. This is going to be growth, exponential growth. And letter C, three-halves is the same thing as 1.5. That's also bigger than one, it's growth. So all you have to do is look at the basis to determine is it growth or is it decay. All right, big part when solving equations. Exponential equations, a little bit tricky to solve. Common bases make it a lot easier. The property of equality states that if we have the common base B, then our exponents have to equal each other. That's what this is saying. When bases are the same, x equals y. And hopefully that's obvious enough. Here's my base 2 and here's my base 2. 2 cubed is 8. So that equals 2 to the x. So I have to get an 8 over here. And what's the only number that will result in an 8? Well, when x is 3. If x is 3, then 2 raised to the third is 8. So 8 would equal 8. So bottom line, if the base is are the same, then the exponents are the same. And we would say x equals 3. So on all these problems, let's get the bases the same. And once we do that, we're going to set the exponents equal to each other. Whew! Let's try the first one. 3 raised to the 2x equals 3 raised to the 10. This is easy enough. The bases are the same, so the exponents have to be equal. 2x equals 10. So we solve x equals 5. That's easy enough, is it not? That is the answer for our very first question, letter A here. Let's try letter B. We have common bases again, so that means our exponents must equal each other. 3x minus 10 equals 50. Solving, 3x has to equal 60. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 20. There's our answer for letter B. All right, these get a little bit tricky. Hopefully you see that letter A and letter B are very, very simple. Letter C goes up a step in difficulty level. Stink, our bases aren't the same, right? So we're stuck. Is there any way we can get our bases the same? Is there any way that I can make this a base of 3? Well, isn't 9 the same thing as 3 squared? Aha! If we know that, watch what we can do here. I'm not going to change anything on the left side. It's just 3 raised to the 2x. Watch how 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So I'm just going to take that number and raise it to the 10th, because 3 squared is 9. I haven't changed anything yet. Now what I have is I have a power raised to a power. What happens when you have a power raised to a power? You multiply when you have a power raised to a power. So again, I'm just going to copy it on the left side as it's written. 3 raised to the 2x, that equals 3 raised to the 20th, because 2 times 10 is 20. And what do you know it? We got ourselves some common bases. Woo! So if we have ourselves common bases, we set them equal to each other. 2x equals 20. What does that mean? x equals 10. And I should say, class, these are equations. Equations, you could always check your answer. So I could go right now, 3 raised to the 2 times x. Well, 2 times x 2 times 10 is 20, so 3 raised to the 20th is the same thing as 9 raised to the 10th. You can put this in your calculator and see if your left side equals your right side. If it does, you did the answer right. That's kind of nice to know. Why don't you guys pause the video and try letter D on your own. All right, here's the answer for letter D. 4 and 8 are your bases, and you can't get them, you can't get 4 to be a base of 8, nor can you get 8 to be a base of 4. However, you can get both of them to be a base of 2. Isn't 4 the same thing as 2 squared? Absolutely it is. So it's 2 squared raised to the 2x. Isn't 8 the same thing as 2 cubed? That can be raised to the x minus 1. So now what we have is we have a power raised to a power again in two situations. So now we're going to have 2 raised to the 4x, because 2 times 2x is 4x. That equals 2 raised to the 3 times x minus 1. Now we have common bases, base 2, base 2. Set the exponents equal to each other. 
So we're going to solve 4x equals 3 times the quantity x minus 1. And now we're going to continue to solve. 4x equals 3x minus 3. Subtract 3x from both sides, so x equals a negative 3. And there's our answer for problem letter D. Why don't you guys try letter E on your own now? Here's the answer for letter E. 10 is a base. It's raised to the 4x plus 1. 100 is the same thing as 10 squared. That raised to the 3x plus a half. Now, be, being that we have base 10 and base 10, you can set the exponents equal to each other. 4x plus 1 equals 2 times the quantity, 3x plus a half. When you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. So it's 2 multiplied by 3x plus a half. Let's solve now. 4x plus a half equals 6x plus 1 using the distributive property. Subtract 4x, subtract 1, 0 equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 0. That is the correct answer for problem letter E. Letter F is slightly more difficult again. Watch how we do letter F. It's slightly more difficult when we have a fraction, but watch what we can do with this fraction. I'm going to keep the left side the same, 5 raised to the x. Now on the right side, 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. So I'm going to say it's 1 over 5 squared raised to the x plus 3. All I did was change this 25 into 5 squared. Now that I know that, remember how we can move anything like x cubed? I can move that to the denominator and make it 1 over x to the negative third. And then I can move it back to the numerator and make it x raised to the positive third. I can move anything from the denominator to the numerator as long as I change the sign on the exponent. That's one of the properties of exponents. So I can move this 5 squared up to the numerator and change the sign on my exponent. So again, I'm going to keep the left side the same. Write this down with me, please. 5 raised to the x equals, if I move this upstairs, now it's 5 raised to the negative second. That raised to the x plus 3. And what do we got? We got ourselves some common bases. Base 5, base 5. So now we set our exponents equal to each other and solve. So that means x has to equal a negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3. When you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. Continuing to solve, x equals a negative 2x minus 6. Add 2x, 3x, then equals a negative 6. So x equals a negative 2. And there's our answer for problem letter F. Problem letter G. One third, this 3 is raised to the first power. It's an understood. One third, 1 over 3 raised to the first power, raised to the x plus 4. And then this 1 ninth is the same thing as 1 over 3 squared, because 9 is 3 squared. That raised to the x plus 6. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get bases of 3. So if I move this up to the numerator, I just change the sign on the exponent. So it's 3 raised to the negative 1 raised to the x plus 4. This moving up to the numerator is 3 raised to the negative 2nd. That raised to the x plus 6. And now we have common bases of 3. So we're going to set our exponents equal to each other because our bases are equal to each other. So negative 1 times x plus 4. That equals a negative 2 times x plus 6. Solving this sucker, a negative x minus 4, that equals a negative 2x minus 12. Add 2x. And I get 1x, add 4, and I get a negative 8. There's my answer for problem letter G. X equals a negative 8. You try letter H all on your own, please. Pause the video, try it on your own. 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So 1 over 3 squared is raised to the 2x plus 5. That equals 27 is 3 cubed. So 1 over 3 cubed raised to the x minus 2. 
So we're getting common bases, and that base is going to be 3. We're going to move this to the numerator, and it's 3 raised to the negative second raised to the 2x plus 5. This is going to move to the numerator, so it's 3 raised to the negative third. That raised to the x minus 2. And now you found it. Your common base is 3. So once you guys did that, now you set your bases equal to each other. So a negative 2 multiplied by 2x plus 5, that equals a negative 3 times x minus 2. And now we solve. Distributive property, a negative 4x minus 10 equals a negative 3x plus 6. Add 4x, subtract 6, and we get a negative 16 equals x. x equals a negative 16 is the answer that you should have got for letter H. Bottom line, you really got to make sure that you're very familiar with bases because you got to get common bases to solve these ones. And then with every single one of these, you can certainly check them just by substituting x back in. So put a negative 16 right in here, put a negative 16 in here, and see if the left side equals the right side. Let me know if you have any questions on that when you get to class tomorrow.